So welcome, 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 my beloved colleague, Patricia. We so appreciate your consistent visionary leadership. And as always at Setsi, we begin all things by giving thanks to our creator. We give thanks to the original stewards of the various lands we're on. We acknowledge all our ancestors. We acknowledge all those who toiled without compassion or compensation. We acknowledge all our elders and community stalwarts whose shoulders we stand on as we build, share, and learn together for our collective liberation and sovereignty. So Patricia, can you please let, uh, introduce yourself to our listeners and viewers and share a bit about your remarkable work? Yeah, my name is Patricia Baby Amawa. Thanks for having me, Victor, by the way. Um, yeah, I'm the executive vice president of Silver Trust Media and Afro Global Television. Um, well, there's a short video that I would like to share that highlights some of, you know, my achievements, um, which, you know, over the years, we've mostly worked in elevating the Black community and, you know, uh, the wider Canadian audience uh, using the media as our main, you know, tool. Incredible. Thank you so much for that. Remarkable video and remarkable context. So what inspires you about your work? What has you curious right now? Wow, that's a great question. What has me curious and what inspires me about my work? Um, you know, the work that we do is really amazing. When we started to play in this space, in the media space, um, we were like pioneers because there was really nobody doing what we we're doing. And we, we came into, you know, uh, this uh, because there was a, a need, there was a vacuum. Um, there were no TV shows that were focused on the Black community that were elevating. Uh, most times when people turned on the television, what they saw was either war, poverty or crime to do with the Black community. And we wanted to change that, you know, image. So we we actually, you know, um, and back to the John to start a television, you know, show um, to uh, showcase, you know, success stories, inspire us to aspire for greater levels of success and to celebrate, you know, our achievements with the world. And in 2002, we, we actually launched on Omni Television. Um, it's the longest la lasting show of its kind in Canada, now in its 22nd year. So Planet Africa is on Omni TV across Canada on all the you know cable and satellite platforms. Um, and in 2016, we launched our own you know 24 hour TV channel, and we published three regularly scheduled magazines and um, you know so many other titles in our Discover magazine series. We're hitting you know almost 25 or so now. So um, what inspires me about our work is the ability you know to bring about social change to inspire us as a people who have historically been disadvantaged to aspire for better, uh, to know that we you know, come from a lineage of kings and queens and that greatness runs in our race. Uh, and so we do this by you know, showcasing uh, the best in our community, by showcasing success stories. And we also have two award shows. So through these award shows, we showcase excellence in its purest form. And, you know, our young people can see people that look like them excelling in different fields. Um, so being able to, you know, be part of this is really incredible. I, I tell you a, a quick story. So there was a time we did a, a story in one of our magazines on top African Canadians in the banking sector. So we approached the banks and I remember a couple of the banks were pretty nervous and they're like, okay, well, you give us a little bit more time. Um, we have some promotions coming up. They're asking us, you know, what is the highest, um, you know, person in, in this bank and that bank. And, and believe it or not, the banks that did not have, you know, top people in the Black community um, in their leadership echelons. Uh, within a short time, we saw, you know, significant improvement. This means that our work challenged them to be more representative um, in, you know, their leadership. So, um, you know, even if it's just to let the world know that we also are making a difference. Also, we are also contributing to the Canadian mosaic. Um, I think, you know, this, these two reasons are very gratifying. And of course, you know, I'm personally inspired, you know, by the great strides that we've made as a community, in spite of all the challenges um, that we face and continue to face on a daily basis. Absolutely. That's absolutely remarkable. And remember, we, we're people of griots. We're a people of oral tradition and narrative and story. So for you to be able to bring these stories out and then and once again, use that as a leveraging point to 
supports sectors and industries and ecosystems in terms of censoring justice, access, inclusion, diversity, and equity, and once again, change the landscape of some of these sectors is truly remarkable and inspiring. So once again, I applaud you. Madasi pa, pa, pa. We give thanks for your leadership and your brilliance as always. So my next question, what challenges and barriers do you face in your work? And how are you and your team working to overcome some of these challenges? Yeah, um, I must admit that, you know, um, setting up an organization that is focused on a community that is economically, um, you know, at the bottom of the, uh, the, the, you know, the strata and a community that has, you know, historical um, disadvantage and a community that, you know, is often marginalized and overlooked um, is in itself challenging uh, because, I mean, I, I, I remember once we did get a, a few people who said to us, change the name of your company because, you know, uh, there's a little bit of um, a disadvantage in the name because it's, it has Africa in it. It, it, it. It's actually, you know, reflecting Black people. And some people may not want to identify, but we were very, you know, um, straightforward in, in terms of our vision and objectives and our, you know, what we actually set out to do. Uh, number one was to bring dignity and respect to people of African heritage, wherever they were born on the planet, be it on the continent, in the Caribbean or here or whatever. And that's that's why we see the name planet Africa, wherever you're from on the planet, as long as you're linked or connected to Africa in some way, you're part of the vision. And our TV channel is called Afro Global. Same concept. Whether you're Afro-American, Afro-Brazilian, Afro, what Afro, Afro whatever, you're part of the vision. So our goal was to bring the entire respect to our global, you know, uh, community of people connected to. Africa in, in whatever way, you can say black people. And the second goal is to unite us. And that's why even our name reflects that. Uh, we wanted to unite us as a community to think like a people, not like a fragment or a fragmented group of people who are from here and there, you know, but because we have, you know, a central identity, which I think if we can, you know, try to governize, uh, we would be, you know, not just at the top, but we'll be able to overcome a lot of the challenges that we face. Because the fact that uh, we're still at the bottom in a lot of places is because of the fragmentation. So our second goal was to unite us. And the third goal, you know, is to inspire us. And that's why for us, we don't showcase negative um, stuff, you know, through our media platforms, because we know that the mainstream media does enough of that. So our goal is to inspire or showcase the best success stories and say, hey, 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 you know, you too can do it. You too can be whatever you want to be, because if you can see it, you know, you can be it. So um, our challenges were multifold, actually. Um, the first one is finances, you know, um, trying to get financing to run an organization that's focused on the black community proves to be the biggest challenge that you can think of. I mean, in recent times we've seen even government, you know, earmark, even banks earmark funding after, you know, George Floyd and the advent of a few organizations advocating for the black community. But prior to that, um, there was no nothing, you know, so finances was a, a challenge. Um, and also getting us to believe in ourselves enough to invest in ourselves, to invest in an organization that reflected us, who we could be, not just reflecting who we are, but who, who we could be, you know, and that's that, that's the aspiration that, you know, keeps us focused and energizes us every day. The fact that we're trying to get us to look at the image of who and where we could, you know, be as a, as a people. Um, and, and, and the third thing is um, the fact that, um, you know, we are doing something that is unique. So sometimes when you're pioneering an idea or, or you know, a concept, you kind of, um, you know, make a lot of mistakes. Um, but I'm happy that, you know, we we kind of uh, learned, uh, did, made a lot of mistakes because we actually grew and learned from those mistakes. Uh, we persevered over the years, you know, mainly because we're vision focused and we came into the market, into the, you know, this arena with a, a purpose, you know, to make a difference. And um, I think, you know, even though the challenges have been there, we have found creative ways to you know, stay above the waters and just keep going.
That's beautiful. I appreciate your candor, your transparency, authenticity, and your vulnerability in, in sharing those truths. And I, 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 I'm almost um, inspired um, because I always think of that proverb that speaks about until the lion learns to write, every story will glorify the hunter. And I feel when we're dealing with imperialism and colonialism and capitalism, the importance of being able to tell our own stories, um, to, to share our own narratives and reflect images that are positive to our children, our children's children, we're in trouble. So I, I really applaud you and your team and your colleagues for all that you do to represent us so well. You make our ancestors proud, family. I really I give thanks for all that you do. So my next question is, do you have a set of key priorities right now? Uh, everyone's always excited about the Planet Africa Awards, where we, we show uh, African excellence. Afro Global TV is thriving. Your print media is thriving. Do you have a set of key priorities right now in your work? Yes, I mean, uh, we actually in a you know evolving you know industry which has faced a lot of um, disruptions in the last few years with the advent of you know uh, digital platforms um, and you know. Also, we are next door to a giant, um, the United States. So the media industry in Canada, you know, continues to face this uh, upheavals. But um, for us at this time, our main goal is to, um, you know, uh, create digital platforms, uh, digital platforms that um, will continue the work that we're doing, the work of, you know, um, elevating and um, bringing dignity and respect to our people, uniting us and inspiring us to aspire for greater levels of success. Um, so our goal is to build digital platforms and um, to innovate, innovate uh, to catch up with, you know, what's going on. We're already innovating in so many ways in, you know, a lot of the things that we're doing. But we want to even do more of that. Um, and then secondly, uh, we also, you know, have gone into the film, you know, space. Um, we produce a drama series called Mobella Palace, which is ongoing. And just this past summer, we actually uh, produce uh, a feature film uh, titled The Life Coach, which tackles the problem of mental health, which, you know, is very prevalent in our community. So um, we want to continue to use the media as a major, you know, tool uh, to harness, you know, the benefits that um, it, it provides to impact the lives of members of our community and beyond. Um, as you said er earlier, right, the, the, the story of the hunt glorifies the hunter. We want to be the ones to tell our own stories from our own perspectives and, you know, uh, from the way that we want the world uh, to not just see, but, you know, hear about our experiences uh, and, you know, our journey and our history. Beautiful, beautiful. So my second last question, what is your ultimate goal and what does success feel like and look like to you and your colleagues? What does success feel like and look like? Um, you know, when I look back at all that we've achieved over the years, um, I am tempted to say that we've been successful in doing what we're doing, but a part of me does not want to do that because I want to continue to challenge myself um, to yearn for the next success. Um, you know, the next success. Well, why I do not um, underestimate or uh, minimize uh, what we've done, the monumental impact that we've you know made over the years, but um, I choose to focus on what needs to be done, because believe it or not, um, our community and people of color in Canada still experience a lot of, you know, marginalization and setback and um, the, the playing field is not level yet. So there's still a lot of work to be done. Um, so we have to continue to advocate, you know, to speak truth to power um, and to inspire us as a people um, not just just to take risk, but to be bold, to go out there, to take our rightful place in society, and 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 to leave our mark. You know, the International Decade for People of African Descent, which is sort of ending this year, um, made a lot of countries, forced a lot of countries to put you know things in place to uh, better the lives of people of African descent. But I I must recognize that you know not too much has been done. And a lot more needs to be done. So all of us who work in this space, um, we still need to continue to, um, you know, 
put our eye on, on, the, on the goal, the goal to make sure that there's not just equality, but equity. You know, equity considers intersectionalities and it makes sure that everyone, um, whatever challenges or setbacks they have can compete, you know, favorably in, in different spheres with the rest of society. Um, and, and to me, that's my inspiration going forward. Um, and also to make sure that our young people continue to see, you know, versions of themselves that reflect where they can, you know, dream uh, and aspire to, to get to. Um, so um, those things really inspire me a lot. And for me, success is when we as a people are winning, not just when one person is winning. And, and, and when I say we as a people, um, I'm talking about all marginalized people because, you know, as they say, right, a threat to justice uh, you know, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. So we are like, you know, a collective group of people who, you know, need to stand together uh, to ensure that no one, you know, is left behind and no one is um, left at the bottom, especially, you know, when we're actually thinking of progress uh, for, you know, the, the community at large. Incredible. Thank you so much. So my last question, do you have any closing thoughts or a call to action for our listeners and our viewers? First of all, I just want to say that I'm very proud of the work that you and your organization, you know, is doing. Um, I I was just reading about what you're doing. It's really incredible. And believe it or not, um, each and every one of us has a unique opportunity to make a difference and an impact wherever we are. Um, it doesn't have to be, you know, grand, yours or big things, but, you know, in our own little way, we could, you know, make a difference wherever we are. And um, one thing I'll just say is let's not be comfortable with a little. Let's continue to, you know, yearn um, for, you know, the, the, the possibilities and the opportunities that we can get. Um, let's not just, you know, once we're thrown a, a little carrot, you know, be content with that. Um, contentment is great when you're expressing gratitude, but contentment when it comes to achievement um, should not, um, be limited, should not be something that is ever attained. It should be something that you continue to strive for so that we, you can continue to learn and continue to grow. So that's what I would say to everyone. And I, I just like to say this all the time. If you can be excellent, don't be good. If you can be extraordinary, don't be excellent. Be totally amazing. Ashe, this was absolutely remarkable. I so appreciate all you do for so many. And, and, and all the words of wisdom and jewels that she provided to our listeners and viewers. And as always, at sets, we begin all things and we end all things by acknowledging our creator, by acknowledging the original stewards of the various lands we're on. We acknowledge all our ancestors, all those who toiled our compassion and compensation. We acknowledge all our elders, including stalwarts, whose shoulders we stand on as we build, share, and learn together for our collective liberation and sovereignty. Thank you so much, Patricia, for all that you do. We appreciate you. Thank you. And thanks.